So as I mentioned, DStreams were the original streaming API for Apache Spark, and these days people use something else. It's called structured streaming. Sometimes, though, you still run into libraries that expect DStreams like that Twitter library that I was just using. So it's still useful to know that it's out there and how it works. But you'll find that structured streaming is the more modern API for streaming in Spark, and it's also easier to use. Its idea is that it uses data sets as its primary API instead of RDDs or DStreams that look like RDDs. And like I said before, much of Spark is going the way of using data sets in Scala or data frames in Python as its primary API. And the beauty of this is it's pretty elegant for streaming because you can imagine a data set that just keeps getting appended to forever and you just query it whenever you want to, just like any other data set. So the streaming part is just that so we keep adding more and more rows to that data set in real time as new information is received. And that makes things a lot easier. It means you can use these data sets much, much like just any other data set. So there's actually not a whole lot for us to talk about in this lecture. Uh, once you set things up, you just use this like any other data set. All the other stuff that we've learned in the course applies exactly the same way to a streaming data set as it would to a data set that's read from a batch process. And the other nice thing is that by doing this, streaming is now truly real time. This was a real sticking point with a lot of people. And for a while, people were saying that Spark streaming was inferior to other streaming platforms because of that. Well, now they can't say that anymore because with structured streaming, streaming is now truly real time. As new data is received, it will be immediately appended to that data set and you get access to it right away. So we're no longer based on these micro batches of like tiny little RDDs that contain one second worth of data. Uh, we, we don't have to think about that. That level of thought is no longer required in our code. Setting it up is super easy. Um, all we need to do is say spark.readStream instead of spark.read when we're setting up a data frame or a data set. And you can say what, for example, if you wanted to just read in JSON files from a uh, logs bucket on Amazon S3, you could just say spark.readStream.json S3 logs, and that would just sit there monitoring that logs bucket in S3 all day long, 24-7, looking for new JSON files to, to read in and parse. And it would just keep on adding every new line in every new JSON record that was found there into that input data frame. And then you can do whatever you want to it. Uh, you can group it by, you know, some action. You can do a window, just like we saw in DStream. So if you do want to specify a window of time, you can just pass that extra window parameter there to specify the, uh, the period of time over which you want to go. And you can count it up. Um, write the stream out wherever you want to. Uh, in this case, we're going to format it to a JDBC connection and just write it into a MySQL database somewhere. Turn around and stick that in a database. So that's really all the streaming specific code you would see, you know, just the act of actually specifying that window, establishing the stream and where you're writing the stream to. Apart from that, it's just a regular old data frame or data set, depending on how you're using it. And everything you would normally do with a data frame or a data set applies here as well. So we're going to do a little example here of streaming log files. So I included an Apache access log file in your course materials. And what we're going to do is just set up a little directory in our course materials. And we'll copy that log file in and see if our streaming application picks it up and processes it. So to do that, we're just going to say spark.readstream.txt because these are just plain text files, log files, with a directory path to the logs folder within my course materials. At that point, I can just use SQL operations to parse out the data from those log lines using regular expressions. You could use that with a map operation if you wanted to as well. And then just use group by to group things together over some window if you want to and stream out the output, in this case to our console, but it could just as easily go to a database or anything that you want. So let's dive in and stream some logs. Not that kind of log. <laughs> 